Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through their industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Dr. Laura Huges. She is an award-winning PhD researcher and naturopathic doctor. And she has also great connections with India, which we'll certainly talk about, and we'll be talking to her about elevating your health naturally. Welcome to the show, Dr. Laura. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here talking to you today. You are welcome to the show. You are welcome to India in this online form. And I'm sure not just in India, but a lot of people across the globe will benefit from what we are going to talk about. As we, show, so we talked about, we'll be talking about how you can elevate your health naturally. So before coming to, you know, talking about uh, this particular topic, I want to understand, you know, your connection with India. Recently, you have uh, entered, ventured into India. So I want to know from you about that first. Of course, yes. Yeah. So I live in Toronto, Canada, and we have a huge Indian population here. I actually live in a part of Toronto called Little India. So lots of Indian friends, and I love Indian food and Indian culture. But as part of my naturopathic medicine studies, I actually studied in Mumbai. I studied homeopathy in Mumbai, which was amazing. And I just love the openness in India to natural modalities, to traditional medicine, how it's integrated, and just had such an amazing time exploring Mumbai and learning from amazing practitioners there. And for the past seven years, I have been working with a company called doTERRA in essential oils and aromatherapy and really helping people take their health back and have natural safe solutions. And recently we just expanded to India. So with my connections there, I am just helping people in India discover the amazing power of plant medicine. Um, I know there's a huge interest in India and in natural health. So it's just been really fun. And I'm excited to be here talking to, to more people in India. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that, that's nice to know. So I want to understand for the Indian audience, especially, you know, what got you interested into homeopathy that yeah. you came down to Mumbai and, yeah. and studied it? You know what? I So I before I did my naturopathic medicine, I did my PhD, which in a very, you know, scientific world, like very opposite to homeopathy. I actually had no idea what homeopathy was until I was called into naturopathic medicine when my father got very sick and Western medicine wasn't working for him. And as soon as I discovered homeopathy, I just felt it in my body that there's something here. This is miraculous. It's magic. And I, I actually dove into the science behind it and understood it. And we don't, it's not actually very well accepted in North America. So I knew I had to go to a place where it was well accepted, where it was well integrated to fully embody it and learn it from people who were fully accepting of it and see it in action. Um, and India is that is a place like that. So that's kind of what got me over there. Absolutely, absolutely. Dr. Laura, I want to understand from you, you know, why is it that, you know, a lot of people outside, uh, when this is a global world, do not want to accept things about, you know, which are readily available, naturally available, and this knowledge belongs to everyone. So it's yes. very easy. You can, you can adopt it, adapt it to it. Why is it that hindrance? Is it about the quick fix life that we want to live? What is the, I want to understand the mind only when we are in a difficult situation and when there is no other option available in the say Western kind of medicine or, yeah. or, you know, the uh, allopathic medicine that will look at things uh, on the other side. I want to understand so that, you know, through you, this message can spread to a lot of people. Why don't you look at, at the nature? Why don't you look at natural way of elevating your health? Why don't you look at your own body, which is trying to heal you with, uh, you know, all the time, you know, even without you know, knowing about it? Yes, yes. I think it, it's very simple. It, it, it is that quick fix lifestyle, which is just kind of one part of the puzzle. It's our whole conditioning over the past few generations as, you know, more technologies come in, more just people at their nine to five and having to sit in an office all day and just not having the time to get out into nature and just not actually like taking it back to school. One of my favorite things is I was in school for things to say is I was in school for a very long time with all my studies. And it was only when I finished and kind of got out into the world and really thought about it that I was like, 
we actually didn't learn very much in school that would actually help me <laughs> in life now. So I just think it would be beautiful if we taught our children early on the power of putting our barefoot in the grass, of not putting toxins in our body, of talking to plants, of you know, passing down this ancient knowledge of homeopathy and Ayurvedic medicine. It's beautiful. So I think it's just a simple fact that people just don't know because they were never taught. It hasn't been passed down through families, through school, through teachers. And it's really interesting. What I love doing is waking people up to this because once you know it, you really feel the power of it. And you're like, okay, it's never too late. Even if my doctors diagnosed me with X, Y, Z, serious conditions. It's never, ever too late to reclaim your health and make really small changes every day with nature and natural tools to support whatever your medical doctor is doing. And there's so many amazing cases I've experienced in India and here in Canada of people who are really sick. And when they kind of reclaim this power that we all have and just tap back into nature, um, they, they just get dramatically better much, much more quickly. So yeah, I think it's just the awareness. Honestly, we just don't have it. And it's, it's the conditioning of the media, of our schools, of our, you know, the money, unfortunately, in the medical and pharma, pharma system. And I'm not anti-pharma. There's a time and place for everything, but they have a lot of power and it doesn't serve them. <laughs> if everyone is having, you know, sunlight and water, it's, it's free, right? So, yeah. Right, right. Pharma gives a lot of options, especially, you know, in terms of difficult illnesses, in terms of, you know, uh, is immediate cure, life-saving medicines. Absolutely. Also in terms of surgery. Yes. So there are, but but one is the natural way of, and then one can look at as, things as natural as possible. So you talk about, you know, uh, Dr. Laura, you talk about your distinctive science meets spirit method. Tell us about this. And so that, you know, it's nice to see. It's like East meeting the West. Yes. I don't want to confine a discussion into this sort of it looks very uh, very small but it is like you know when you talk about science meets spirit it is actually about you know using science and what we know about things natural putting them together and elevating our health help us yes. understand your method yes so i love being a bridge between science and spirit because i spent so much time in the science medical western world through my research through my phd um, and then I, I've spent a lot of time in the natural world through my naturopathic medicine studies and homeopathy and essential oils and plants. And I feel like I'm a safe space for people because in the scientific world, and I was there, I used to be there. It's just like homeopathy, like that's ridiculous, that's, that's voodoo, like it's, that's crazy. It's, it's it, whatever. And then in the natural world, people, I think, feel like science is too constrictive and we shouldn't have to wait for science to catch up. And I feel like it can just be the best of both worlds. And I think it really, really helps people because we weren't taught this stuff in school. I want to help you understand how your body works. And if you understand how your body works, um, you, you, it's just so much more empowering. And you can, you know, you don't have to depend on your doctor. You don't have to depend on me. I, I feel like I'm a teacher, not a guru. I, I really want people to be the guru of their own health and happiness. And for me, that comes from helping people from a scientific perspective, understand this is exactly how your body's functioning. This is why it's not working. And then pulling in the spiritual side of it in the sense that, you know, there is a greater force guiding us, whether that be your God or earth or just the energy of nature. And through, you know, these living things on earth, we can fuel those pathways that science is helping us understand. So I, I don't like to be black and white and dogmatic. It's very much we're all here to evolve and to grow and to heal. So for me, that comes from bridging both worlds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, a lot of people sometimes think, you know, I've spent so much of life. What will happen if I start adopting this natural method? Yes. And, and many a times you just don't do it. Sometimes even in organic food, I may also sometimes think, what's the use of having one thing organic, which you are not sure even if it is organic. Yes. And, and it is better to have... Uh, everything else that is available, it will not change my life. I don't know whether that is right or wrong, but in terms of health, people think, you know, going natural may not be, you know, possible at this point in time. You talk about that. It's never too late to make changes to our mind, body, and spirit. Help us uh, uh, understand this better so that people who think that it is late, you tell them it is never too it's late. It's never too late. I'll use a, a practical example, then I'll explain why. But my mother, how old is my mom? She's 73. 
And she was a nurse for her whole career. So very, very pharmaceutical, very Western medicine. And she thinks I'm her crazy hippie daughter that's doing all this natural stuff. And I can tell you that she, over the past four or five years, has she's 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 getting younger and younger. And so there's an example of a 73 year old who's on the path of becoming younger. But why I say it's never too late is because I think a lot of people believe that we're born with our genes. And if your mom had diabetes and your dad had cancer or you're obese, that's just your destiny. That's just the way it is. And that's not true. So we understand, again, from a science perspective that um, we can teach our genes how to express themselves. We can teach them to be on or off. And that comes from our environment. That comes from our toxins. It comes from our food, how we exercise, our meditation, our mindset. Um, so even if for the past 25 years, you've, you've been expressing genes that manifest in diabetes through, through daily simple changes, and it's not going to happen overnight, but you can, you can, you can turn those genes on and off and they're all of a sudden you don't have the symptoms of your diabetes anymore. So it can, that's why I say it's never too late because you, until you die, that's what's happening with your genes. And what I want people to understand is that it, it can be as simple as one organic food at a time because it, it, it compounds. It's kind of like when you put a dollar in the bank and just leave it for 20 years, it's compounding interest, right? So um, that's why I love helping people with essential oils because they're a tool that tap into every level where if you feel like it's very overwhelming, let's just start cleaning up your toxins in your environment with plants. Let's, let's, use, the, let's use the oils and the aromatherapy to help you sleep better. Let's use them to give you more energy in the day. So even the mindset of I'm just going to start with organic bananas. Right. You know that you're doing something for yourself and that's actually changing your genetics. So it comes down to that. Right. Right. In terms of, you know, people generally take things, feel happy about it. Maybe some uh, moment, some things you feel very happy and then you think, okay, nothing wrong has happened and they continue with that life. And later on, when somebody, something happens, that's a different story. But in day to day, how do we decode the body's signal, symptoms? What are the things that we can notice if we can notice, if we want to notice? Generally, you will not be able to, but only if you look at it. How yeah. do we do that so that, you know, we can remove the wrong things out of our life mm -hmm. and get the natural stuff into this process? How Absolutely. do we do that? Because these signals may not be so... Uh, so great or so big that you will notice them if you don't actually notice. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is what makes the human body so amazing is that you can be doing something bad. I don't like to say good or bad, but you could be do something that, you know, isn't too good for you for years and your body is always trying to compensate. So that's why people could be doing something. And then, you know, it's, oh, I, feel, I feel fine. I feel fine. It's because your body behind the scenes is working for you. So just always know that your body's working for you, which is a beautiful mindset. Um, but I think, Again, it's very simple in the fact that we just live in such a hectic, busy world with our phones, with so much action outside, with our jobs. We really have to just take, it's as simple as taking two minutes before you go to bed at night and taking a few deep breaths and just asking yourself, how do I feel right now? Do I feel tired? Do I feel overwhelmed? Is my, do I have brain fog? And what I want people to understand is that we've been, again, kind of conditioned to accept things as normal. Like it's not normal to be tired all the time. It's not normal to be have brain fog. It's not normal to, to not be able to go to the bathroom <laughs> or go to the bathroom right. seven times a day. So just start paying attention to what you think is normal and what you're accepting. And if you're like, I don't want to feel like that anymore. You don't have to feel like that anymore, but it's just what's, what's your body giving you. And, and some of us have never been taught to like, Oh, how many times a day do I go to the bathroom <laughs> or am I thirsty all day? Just, just start being curious with yourself is what I'm saying, but you have to make at least two or three minutes a day to ask yourself the question and it's as simple as that right right in a simple uh person's language how should you know uh, uh, tell us you know what we should do every day what are the things we can do what are the things we should not do in our day-to-day -day life in terms of you know uh be in our optimum health yes so i think um i mean it differs from person to person which is what I also love helping people understand is that I think we can get overwhelmed looking at the internet and being like, okay, well, this expert says that this is the way. And again, if, if we just start listening to our body, like your body's talking to you differently than mine, right? But generally speaking, there's things that the whole population can be doing for sure to feel better. 
And I think one of them is getting a good night's sleep. Sleep is so healing and restorative. So much amazing stuff happens when we sleep. So if you're not sleeping well, just bringing in a new sleep routine, which is which is easy. Um, I can help people with that for sure. That's why I love using aromatherapy to help people sleep better, to calm the nervous system at night, to turn off the brain and just like really relax. Another big one is drinking enough water, <laughs> clean water, hydration for the cells. And I would say getting sunlight on your skin. Like those are three simple, inexpensive, easy things to do that will make a huge difference in people's lives. Okay. And okay. of course, sunlight. we can break it down more into sunlight. food and right. exercise. But... Right. It's good you said sunlight because a lot of people just talk about sunscreen. I yes. mean, I've always tried to understand that difference. Who should you do, who should not use sunscreen? Yeah, sunscreen is an interesting one. Um, there's lots of research coming out now that most of the sunscreen sold in the store is actually quite toxic. So when I say toxic, I, it's causing more harm to your cells than good. So it might prevent skin cancer, but it might cause other hormonal disruptions, which is not good. And we, we need we need sun. Sun is sun is life giving. Like think about plants right. and sun. They need it. We need it. So it's it's, it's about using natural sunscreens and um, not being afraid of the sun anymore. We need to kind of reimagine our relationship with the sun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Better to carry an umbrella or a hat or a cap or whatever it is if you're yeah. falling directly onto your face. But sun is good, especially during day, uh, during the morning time. Morning night. Be that yeah. as it may, I want to understand uh, from you, uh, Dr. Laura, is that, you know, you talked about essential oils. Yes. Why that much focus on essential oils? What are these essential oils? Because even though people have heard about it, they don't know uh, about it too much and how to use it. Because many a times you may not be using it in the right direction and whether, you know, so I want to understand from yes. you for the audience. Yes. So I have them all on my shelf behind me. You can see those are all essential oils. Um, right. So essential oils, they come from plants. They come from flowers, trees, fruits, all sorts of different plants. And it's a very concentrated part of the plant and it's the part that smells. So if you picture smelling a rose or smelling an orange, that's the essential oil. And the essential oil has huge benefit for the plant. And interestingly, our cells work very similar to plant cells. So when we take that essential oil and put it in our body, um, it can support all sorts of different systems. And how I like to explain it to people is that it basically it goes into our body and it doesn't work like a drug where we become dependent on it, but it goes in and says to ourselves, how can I help you work better? Or what do you need me to do? Do you need to calm you down? Do you need me to soothe you? And why people may have used essential oils in the past, but not experienced results or had some negative effects is because there's actually no regulation in the industry for purity and potency. And that's why I love working with doTERRA, which is the company I work with that has just expanded to India because they're very, very focused on 100% pure plant material which our body responds totally differently to. So, I mean, you can use essential oils to support, a lot of people think about it, oh, it smells good, so it makes me happy or it makes me relaxed, but we can use it for digestion, for lung health, for hormone balance, anything, anything really. <laughs> um, so that's why I love them as a tool because no matter what someone comes to me with, I'm like, okay, like let's try this oil. And what I love is that people feel better very, very quickly. So they get that empowerment, like, oh, natural stuff does work. And it, it works safely with my pharmaceuticals or I don't have to worry about it being dangerous. So what else can I try? And suddenly we're using them um, to support our environment. So eliminating toxins, maybe you stop cleaning with toxic chemicals and use lemon oil. Maybe instead of using Tylenol for your headache, you use peppermint oil and we get this compound effect and people feel better very quickly. Right, right. So uh, essential oils are generally for inhaling purposes, not to eat. So there's three different ways that you can use essential oils, but it's very important that you trust the source so that they're pure. And that's, again, why I trust doTERRA. But you can use them smelling the bottle. I have one on my desk. Um, you can use it on your skin. So if you have a headache, you can rub it in here or in your tummy if you have a tummy ache. And there are some oils that are safe for ingestion. So you can use them for cooking. Okay. Like lemongrass is beautiful for cooking or taking frankincense to support immune health or something like that. Yeah. Right, right. There is much to learn about all these things and it is good to know that you are spreading this message yes. in canada when you talk about this these things how is the acceptance level how do people respond or react to when you talk to them about this um i think it definitely helps with my background that 
they're like, oh, if Laura's talking about this, there must be something to it. But there's definitely, it's definitely a little bit polarizing. There's still some people, especially with the, with the COVID pandemic that just happened, some people that are very just fearful around health and they want to stick with what they know and might not, not necessarily be open to alternative solutions. But I would say generally speaking, it's well accepted and the message is rippling out more and more. So that's good. Right. What are the other things you are doing to spread this message about, you know, elevating your health naturally? Um, I do a lot of teaching. So I, I just love to teach and to share and to talk. And I have my own podcasts that I do and just popping on podcasts and meeting new people. And just, I, I think what we've been missing in the past few years with the pandemic is human connection. So even though, you know, we're in different countries right now, we're having this beautiful connection and, and there's so much that can happen person to person. and just hearing each other's stories and listening to each other. So I just try to do a little bit of that every day. I have two small children. Well, one on the way, one small child. So it's a little bit challenging right now, but um, it's a passion. So I make it happen. And that's what that's what I'm up to. Right, right. One last question I want to understand from you, Laura, is that, you know, if it's so much of changes happening in our world uh, with, with so much of technology coming in, with so much of, uh, you know, more towards consumerism, uh, everybody wants a new phone every second day. So all that, so in, amidst this, you seem to be quite positive. You say the future is rigged in our favor when, let, when you let it, nature inform ourselves and tap into our unique energy flow and intuitive wisdom. What is, the, uh, what is it that keeps you, makes you so hopeful about our future? Again, just for me, it's just been reconnecting with nature and just like feeling the the, the immensity of the world. And there's there's just so much more at play than the tiny little lives that we lead every day. And I think tapping back into my power, knowing that I can heal myself, I can help other people heal. I can be a conscious consumer. So, you know, it's okay if you want to buy a new phone, but like, how is that company sourcing their battery? You know, what are they doing to give back to humanity? Um, I think if we have money to spend as consumers, we can do it in a way that actually changes the world. So that's another thing I love about the work that I do is that we do a lot of work to elevate the people that are that are farming the oil. We don't just go in and take it from the earth. Um, so I think if we all become a little bit more conscious about this and ask, OK, like, how can I show up every day to actually change the world, even if I want to buy something? We can force companies to start doing the right thing. And more and more people are waking up to this. So I think it's only a matter of time until we hit the tipping point. And that, right, I just, right. that's, and if I'm going to be here, I have to be positive because. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. And whichever phone you buy to connect with people, the most important is you connect to nature. Exactly. Yes. Turn it off for an hour and go take a walk. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So those people who want to learn more about you, more about your podcast, you know, the, to connect with you professionally, What's the best way for them to do so? Absolutely. So I'm on, I love LinkedIn. So I'm on LinkedIn, Dr. Laura Hughes. And I actually specifically, just because I'm doing a lot of work in India right now, have a, a website specific for India. So it's essentiallivingindia.com slash free book. And you can download a free book about essential oils. And on Instagram, I'm at Dr. Laura Hughes. And I, I just, I love personally connecting with people. So people can feel free to reach out to me in one of those places. Wonderful. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thank you.